Hello, this is Morgan Jacobs doing a recording of the Vaporwave uh, turntable animation out of Rhino 6. Um, this is starting at a point where your final model is entirely complete. Uh, we see lots of clean lines, there aren't things glitching out. Um, we don't see like flashing edges. Uh, also, if you have curves and in, in lines from when you modeled this thing, um, we're going to want to type Let's say I'll put some curves in here and different stuff. Let's say these are in here rather than find them all. We're going to type SEL CRV, which is select curves, and we're going to hide those, um, leaving us only with our model and the table and post that it's on. You don't have to add these. Um, I've just added these for, for a frame of reference. So to begin this, uh, what we're going to do is open actually a new Rhino file. So we're going to go to Rhino. And in this new Rhino document, um, we're going to want to transfer your information from this document to this one. And uh, in order to do that, what we're going to do, because this one is full of other information from when you built the thing, we're going to select your, your stuff. I talked in the last tutorial about dragging over in one direction uh, from the right top or bottom will select everything you touch, but dragging from the left will only include things that are inside of your inside of your box. Um, so you can see this really only selected the bottom parts, whereas this direction selects almost everything. But we can just get it all inside the box, and we're going to type copy to clipboard, which essentially builds uh, uh, a copy control C into the program, because if you just type copy, obviously it copies within the same file. Um, so we're going to go here and we're going to paste it into this file. We're in perspective mode. I'll swap to shaded here. And this is our file. Nothing else is in this file beside this. And uh, yours will copy from the same location. So if your file was over here in Rhino, it's going to copy to over here. It's not going to copy to the center. So what you might want to do is uh, select your project, uh, type in move, and then select maybe a center point. Click that center point and then type zero, and that will move your project to the zero, zero, zero point in Rhino. Uh, that's a good start. The next step is we're going to uh, type display properties. And then we're going to go to, uh, actually, first thing we're going to do is swap to our rendered view. Um, but I think my rendered view is going to look a little bit different than yours. And that's because I've, I've curated my render view already. Um, so what I've done here is gone to my display properties. Um, here you'll see lots of different things you can change. But what we're interested in is uh, editing our render settings. Um, so this is the render view in Rhino, not when you render something in Rhino. Um, and so I've gone to my viewport settings, background, and changed it from solid color, or some of you might have transparent, um, which looks like this, also very helpful. Um, but uh, again, display properties, I have mine set to image file, and then the file name I have here, I have this image that I download off the internet, I'll attach the link to this image, um, as well as upload this image to the drive inside of uh, the resources folder um, so that you guys can take this exact same image and, and work with it yourselves. Um, but, okay, so we did display properties. We can go to edit render settings, background image file, image file name, locate your, uh, locate your image file, and that will get your background to be this image rather than whatever you have right now. And we can see if we go to our four views that it's just this one. Um, and that how I move around this world doesn't matter that image is static in the background, which is which is what we want. Now the next thing we're gonna do uh, is to start to set up our turntable animation. So if I type in turntable, you'll see that the model just starts spinning, which is what we want. We want something that allows us to see all sides, gives us a uh, the ability to uh, investigate the model a little bit further, um, as well as at like a leisurely pace, kind of observe it from from all angles. And so, uh, 
regardless of this 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 slider here will control how fast that happens and uh, which direction it happens in um, but you'll notice that my my uh, object is not spinning around its center because the center which is set by this post this post is also moving and that's because it's spinning around wherever your camera is focused on in Rhino your camera is focused on the last thing that you zoom down so uh, you guys might type ZS for z or type in zoom selected um, but I just type ZS and so if I type ZS on this and then without holding shift, just scroll out, you'll see that this thing stays in the center of my screen. And I can even do stuff like this and this, but it's always going to be kind of around that same area. So in an effort to make sure that the object that we're spinning around is this, I'm actually going to copy vertically. So I'm going to type copy and then click vertical, this little post. And I'm going to copy it into the center of my project, just somewhere in the middle here. Uh, then I'll hit escape, so it's in there. I'll type SEL last, which will select the last thing I had, which is this post. And I'll type ZS on that. Now as I zoom out and level out the, the file a little bit, um, actually, I don't think we should zoom in and out too much. So I'm going to type ZS again to, to recenter. I'm going to keep my mouse on this, this center point right here. Um, and uh, now, if I type select last, and I type hide, because I don't want that to render in anywhere, um, and I type turntable, we'll see that this post down here at the bottom is barely moving. The model is spinning in its space, and the post is staying kind of perfectly vertical, giving the appearance of this thing spinning on the table rather than the table spinning with the rest of the room. So now we're 90% we're of the way there. Um, we're starting to really get a handle of it, and especially when we slow it down, this thing really almost uh, is depicted as being completely, um, completely stationary. Um, and I can zoom out once more if I want to get a little more of it in the shot. I'm trying to keep my mouse in the center here so that when I zoom in and out, it's mostly focused. Maybe I can get a little bit more of the top, a little bit less of the bottom. That'd be really nice. Yeah, that's perfect. It's a little bit wobbly, but again, if we're going a little slow, um, it's not going to be a huge issue. And again, we're we're clear on the top of the screen and, and clear on the bottom, which again is, is what we're looking for. Um, so the last thing we're going to do here is we're going to bring in some lights. Uh, to do that, we're going to change our top view to another perspective view. We're going to change this to a shaded view so we can see this. We're going to bring in some spotlights. To do that, we can type spotlight. Uh, it's going to ask you to click somewhere. I'm just going to think kind of about, I kind of like this view of my model. It's kind of like big flat area, lots of apertures, some very select other parts here. So I'm going to click on this corner here, and it's going to ask you to set a diameter. I'm going to set that just kind of guessing at like the height of my model, like the how tall it is is how kind of why I want this this spotlight. And then it's going to have me click again for the back of the cone. And this is something we're going to edit. I don't want it to go off in like infinity. Like if I click over, oh, that one actually worked really well. Um, sometimes you can click and it'll go really far. It's not the end of the world. You can click on the uh, piece, click on this point here at the end. Um, no, it's this one actually. Um, and make your cone longer or shorter. We probably want it a little bit longer than this. Think about like where, if you were photographing this, how far away. Uh, a lamp uh, might be and we'll take this whole cone bring it back so that it's facing the the model and then we're going to give it a rotate down somewhere between like 30 eh, let's say 15 and 45 degrees depending on kind of what you want it to, to look like and then I'm going to rotate it um, actually let's do that in reverse order I have flattened it back out and I'm going to say let's rotate it this way so that I can get a little bit more of a, an angle on that same light. And then I'll rotate it vertically. So now that light is kind of shining. Spot, the spot of the spotlight, the focus of it will be this small circle, but it will appear all the way to this edge. I kind of want a soft shadow over the whole thing. So uh, I would recommend all of you do this too. I'm gonna open that center spotlight up to take basically the whole light. 
Um, then what we're going to do is take this spotlight we've already made, and uh, I'm going to type rotate. Click the copy button here at the top. Click the center bit. Bring a line out, and then rotate it, you know, 90 degrees-ish. That should get us somewhere interesting. Um, actually, I think I'm going to go a little bit more than 90 degrees, because we're only going to have two of these. So maybe like almost a full third of the, the 360, so maybe like 120 yeah, 120 degrees is a little bit better. Um, and then I'm just going to make sure this one is also as, as best centered on focusing on the model within its circle as possible. Same with this one. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. Um, and that will give us our two spotlights. Now, you can type lights to access your spotlights. They should pop up down here in the bottom right-hand corner. You'll see we have the skylight on. We have our sun off, and then you see two V-Ray spotlights here. Um, I think they should essentially be the same as Rhino spotlights. Mine are coming in V-Ray because I have V-Ray in. Um, if there's issue with the issues with this specifically, please reach out to me. Um, but uh, they should essentially be the same spotlights. This is the Rhino interface here. Um, and as we scroll over, we can see we pick a color. Now to match the, the background that we've already selected, we're going to click on one of these and click on magenta. And we see that hue start to pop up here. We're going to click on the other one and we're going to click on cyan. Um, we'd like everybody to do that and we see those colors start to pop up here. Now as we go back to the perspective view, what you'll see is if I type in turntable, that there's these shadows that are appearing in the background. And they're kind of like laying down on nothing because that background doesn't really exist. Um, however, we do have some nice blue and pink hues on the model that aren't entirely accurate, but start to depict the, the background. What we can do here is I can double click on the spotlight and go into the intensity and increase the intensity of the light so we get a little bit more pink. You see how that got way more pink? If I go to 120, it's going to get really pink. Um, I'm going to keep it around 60. Between 50 and 60 feels a little bit better for me. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing with the blue. Um, so that those colors are a little more vibrant and we catch them as they catch the object. Um, and then the other thing I'll do is I'll bring this in and I'm going to go to, is it properties, render? Let's see. I think what we want to do so we want to turn off the spotlight's ability to cast shadows. Um, so, oh, it's because I'm in the turntable. So if you have turntable open, you can't do anything else. So I close the turntable, and now when I click on one of these lights, I get its properties popping up here on the right side. That was super weird, but again, it's just the properties tab. Apologies for that. Uh, and what we're going to do is go to the shadow intensity slider and just slide it all the way down. Go to the blue one, shadow intensity slider, slide it all the way down. So now, uh, if we go back to turntable, got to click inside of the viewport, turntable. Um, once again, we'll see the blue and the pink lights. The shadows are substantially less intense, and it's just kind of a glow that's been applied to where these lights are, are touching this model, um, which is which is super nice. You might be able to get away with like, like two, or like five, um, for your shadow intensity. Um, let's see. Let's see if that makes the shadow appear too harsh. No, you can get away with that. I don't see really anything in the background. So at this point, the, the rhino portion of this is done. And uh, we're going to kind of crop this to be as square as possible. So I'm actually just going to crop it using the viewport, um, which is rare. Generally, this isn't the, the system, but I think this is going to be easiest for you guys. Is to kind of start to crop here with the viewport, looking to see if it's square. You can even test to see if it's square. Um, by, oh, that's going to go in the other direction. I guess you could test to see if it's, it's roughly square by 
using a bound. Oh, it's not even facing the same direction as before. I don't know. Eyeball it. You guys have you guys have eyes. You guys are smart. I don't know. Maybe you can even like cheat and like make a sticky note on your on your computer, and if the sticky note is like square. You can like take a look at it, but as long as it's as close as possible, then I think that we're we're pretty good. Um, and we're gonna type set set uh, turntable animation. And we'll hit enter, and here you're gonna pick a number of frames. Uh, I'm gonna set mine to 300. Um, that's around the speed that uh, we'd like you to set it at. That's really just the number of the number of frames within the entire 360 degree animation. And really we could set this to be 360 so that there's a frame for every, uh, every bit of turn. Um, and then we could decide how fast those frames run. I'm going to set mine to clockwise file type JPEG capture method. We want to make sure that this says rendered, um, rendered viewport right there. Viewport perspective. That's the viewport I'm in. Um, and then animation name, I'm going to call this uh, final tutorial underscore vapor wave uh, turntable. It's a long title, but. And that will get us there. Um, and I'm going to hit OK. And then the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go to record animation. Uh, in here, I can click up at the top and I'm going to set a folder for this. I'm going to go to the class TA folder. Um, I already have an animation test, so I'm going to make a new folder that's animation final. Uh, and then I'll click away and click back. And now that folder is selected and then you, I'm going to select run animation. Yes. So here we'll be able to watch this thing spin as it renders out each individual frame, um, which is ideal. Uh, and uh, it's gonna take a little bit less than 300 seconds. So we're just gonna chill for a second um, while we wait for this to completely render out, at which point we're gonna go into uh, Adobe Premiere to finish off this, uh, this rendering. I might cut this bit out. I'll actually probably just put in uh, where you can skip so that you can skip out of this part. All right, when uh, text doc pops up with a bunch of renderings, you'll see here it labels uh, the name of them. And you, if I scroll to the very bottom here, you'll see that there's 300 of them, um, but you don't need that. What we can do now is just open uh, Adobe Premiere. Um, and 
We could save our Rhino file for the first time. Probably should save a little bit more frequently than that. Um, when we open Adobe Premiere, it's going to ask us, do we want to recommend it? And I'm going to say, people don't go around recommending uh, recommending video editing softwares to each other. And I'm going to give them a three. All right. Then I'm going to go to new project and I'm going to label this. Uh, let's say turn table vapor wave. Um, everything else should be fine. Hit OK. And if you've never opened Adobe Premiere, don't worry. This is this like the simplest thing we we can be doing. This is the Adobe Premiere interface, and nothing's gonna kind of open to begin with. Um, you here see here it says source no clips. We're gonna go to file. We're going to go to import. Um, and then we got to find our folder that everything went to. So for me, it's desktop TA Jimenez, animation final. And we see all of my images here, just tons and tons of JPEGs. And what we're going to do is we're going to click the very first one. And then you're going to go down here and make sure the image sequence is checked. If this isn't checked, you're only going to bring one picture in. But if it's checked, Adobe Premiere is smart. It knows that you actually wanted this thing to be a video. And that video is going to appear down here. All we have to do now is drag this into, just click and drag, straight into Drop Media here to create a sequence. Um, and if we hit play, voila, we have a, a moving video that is of a high quality um, and is, is moving at a good speed that will will run until uh, the complete cycle is over. And we can check to make sure the complete cycle is done. You can hold Alt and scroll out to make this smaller or larger, or we can scroll back and forth on this. I'm just going to take this animation and copy and paste it, and it's going to automatically paste it at the end of my first clip. And if we run over the break between the clips, you'll see that it's an endless loop. So I'm just going to select these two things, Control-C, Control-V, Control-C, Control-V, and I'm going to drag, oop, I accidentally cut the clip before it. So I'm actually just going to Alt-click and drag, the same way we do in Illustrator when we want to copy a line. Um, and I'm going to make a couple of these just to make sure they're touching each other. Otherwise, you'll see there's like a black flash between them, which we don't want. Um, and maybe I'll run it for, for 10 rotations or something. I don't know how long it's gonna take you guys to, to read the paragraphs from the reading over top of your spinning animations. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's go for two more. Let's go for almost two minutes. Nine. Ten. So that will give us, and I'm just clicking and dragging these, nothing fancy. That will give us here, and then we're going to go to File, Export Media, and uh, assuming you have Adobe Media Coder installed, this should open. That's just another Adobe software from the Adobe Cloud. I'll open that at the end here. Um, and go over a couple possible issues, but uh, all of this, you can leave exactly where it is. Don't touch anything. Um, maximum render quality, fine. Uh, all of this is good. Estimated file size, you can see that right here to make sure you have enough room. It's going to be two minutes long. Um, I'm going to hit Q. And it's going to open Adobe Media Encoder. Adobe Media Encoder is part of the Adobe Suite. Presumably all of you already pay for that. So uh, that should be uh, a free software you can also install. And when that opens, you'll get a screen that looks just like this. Um, here you can see that what we just, uh, is this the one that we did? I guess this is the one that we did. Um, when we hit play here, it's going to export, but let's make sure that it's going to the right location. I'm going to go to desktop, TA Jimenez, animation final, and uh, MP4 looks good, final tutorial, vaporwave turntable. Okay, save. Now when we hit play, this will start exporting. We can see it exporting in real time down here at the bottom. Very fancy. This is going to go fast, so I won't cut this out of the video. Um, and when that's complete, 
we should have an animation that's smooth, that's nice, where the light is matching our background, where the background is static, but the piece moves, and that uh, it's all rotating in kind of a cohesive fashion. So let's see if let's see if it's done it here in five seconds. So that's a good sign. I'll click here on the output and I can open here and we can see that it's inside of this thing. And if I double click on the video, media encoder is going to play it and we can see it rotating here uh, in all its glory. Um, a uh, pretty simple way to create not even a GIF, but just a, a movie um, that's that's playing in real time. Um, and uh, again, we can even, I think there's preferences for this. Yeah, we can set it to repeat. So even when it gets to the end, I think it will just play again. Yeah, so you can even, you can export a shorter one. Um, that's only the length of one rotation, and then we can set here this to repeat, and it's gonna play. Now, if you are curious about the Adobe products that I'm talking about here today, uh, Adobe Creative Cloud, you have your cloud here. Uh, wow, I have a lot of things to update. Um, but I would recommend having Premiere downloaded, InDesign, Illustrator, Photoshop, and Media Encoder. Um, if you get pretty snazzy with stuff, maybe After Effects too, but those are the, the necessities um, they'll be super helpful to you in the long run. And, uh, those are all a part of the basic Adobe cloud suite that is like 25 bucks, um, a month for students or something along those lines. Um, something you might run into in your Rhino file is, uh, that maybe your render viewport doesn't look like mine. If it doesn't, you can just go to your render properties and I will leave my render properties here up on the screen. Um, I'll make it as big as I can. Um, here are the render properties. I have uh, no sun, skylight on, studio, light as the environment, um, gamma is 2.2, all of this. I'll leave it here for a second, but you guys can pause the video if you need to, need to look at this. Um, so those are the document properties, render properties. And then once again, if I type in display properties, you can get a look at these, make sure all these match, pause the video, um, check all these, enter this viewport property. Once again, are these right? It should be. I haven't changed almost any of these over the years, but uh, you guys can pause and double check. Pause and double check. Okay. So. I think that's it, gonna be it for today. Remember, in the description to this video, there's gonna be a link to that background, that same blue-purple magenta or cyan-purple magenta. Uh, we'd like you guys to use that. We'd also like you guys to use the purely cyan and the purely magenta lights on your model um, to match that, that background. Thank you guys so much. I wish you guys the best of luck. Again, if you have questions about the video, comment below the video, because I'll get a notification on my phone and I can respond to it immediately from there. Um, or if you guys need anything else, uh, make sure to send me an email tomorrow and we can potentially uh, Zoom quickly to solve your problems. Uh, have a good night, and uh, don't forget to get some sleep.